Welcome to your Bobby This Today Evening News Update for Monday, July 8th. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Inexcusable. This evening, Prime Minister Mia Motley weighed in on the tragic death of 17-year-old Kyrick Boyce, who died after falling into a 100-feet well at Martin Road, the Point St. Michael, last Thursday. Prime Minister Motley pledged action will be taken to address the concerns raised by frustrated residents. I visited the family as soon as I returned to the country and rest assured that um, the government is going to do what, what it has to do um, by the family and by the continuous, by the residents of all of the housing areas that continue to have difficulties that are outstanding for way too long. But there's only, as I keep saying, 24 hours in a day and only so much funds available and we're trying to spread it out as much as we can but really and truly it is an unacceptable situation okay and, and we also have to set some standards for the things that we do in public spaces and make sure that when people do things that they coincide with the standards that have been set let's say no more at this stage okay. The Prime Minister was speaking on the sidelines of a tour of the site for the Soka Monarch competition on July 28. Motley was pleased with the work on the way at the venue, which can host more than 20,000 people. The venue is also the site of the National Botanical Garden, and the Prime Minister unveiled even bigger plans this evening, which will include the development of an international garden. To have representation of gardens that reflect their own country and their own culture. You immediately know a Japanese garden when you see it. You immediately know a Chinese garden when you see it. You understand? In Morocco, because they've been accustomed to water scarcity for over a millennia, they have a completely different approach to, to plants and gardening, etc. So in every instance, we are going to try and find representation so that we can bring the world to Barbados in these botanical gardens. In other news this Monday, Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick today signaled that government is all but ready to roll out free health care for CARICOM nationals living here. He announced today that Cabinet has stamped its approval on the new policy. And that policy is going to be operationalized in the coming week so that we're taking care of all persons who reside on this island. Minister Bostick made the disclosure as he heaped praise on the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust for facilitating critical surgeries for 89 Barbadian children through its partnership with the World Pediatric Project and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The contribution which you make is one that could not be provided by the Queen Elizabeth Hospital because of the lack of capacity and one that could not have been facilitated by the Ministry of Health and Wellness because we do not have the financial resources to do so. And so that is why I say from the beginning that it is a most outstanding and appreciated contribution. The Barbados National Oil Company Limited today rolled out its first pipeline and maintenance project. At this morning's launch, Energy Minister Wilfred Abrams disclosed that the company is embarking on the exercise after completing a comprehensive inspection of its pipelines at Oysteins and Woodbourne. He noted that this revealed the need for preventative maintenance and upgrades and the company is therefore undertaking the initiative to ensure the safety and security of the public. This maintenance is essential and critical at this time since unlike water which dissipates quickly through evaporation or draining through coral stones, liquid fossil fuel can leave an unwanted stain and impact which will be hazardous to humans and all within the neighboring environs. We all know the issues that we have had in the Gibbons Bogs areas, and we do not want a repeat of those where it can be avoided. Trinidadian company Weld Fab has been subcontracted to carry out the U.S. $3 million project and will be partnering with local civil engineering firm Infrared to carry out the work. Project engineer Jerry Medford of Weld Fab told the news conference it will get on the way next Monday. And the site works, which is the phase that we now going into anticipated 45 days commencing on the 15th of July. 
unexpected to end successfully on September the 6th of this year. The project sites or locations are varied and many, but the major areas, Charnox, Pegwell, Churchill Hill, Ferry Valley, Parish Land, Wilcox area, some areas on the Spring Garden Highway, Pegwell Bogs, Hillview and Waverley Road, Churchill, Church Road, and in the Light and Power Compound in Spring Garden. As was indicated earlier, we will be participating in all of the town hall meetings and all of the sensitization of the local residents, which we did when we were in fact doing the construction, and again we'll be doing with our clients to ensure that safety is of paramount importance and that the public is not unnecessarily discommoded. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now in Jamaica, on the heels of a declaration of a national emergency in the parish of St. Andrew, there are fresh concerns from the opposition People's National Party about the effectiveness of the mechanism to arrest the crime problem. We get more in this report from Television Jamaica. The concern follows numerous calls from various sectors of the society, for the Andrew Holness led government to outline a detailed crime plan. For Central Manchester Member of Parliament and the challenger for PNP President Peter Bunting, the imposition of a state of emergency is more a publicity stunt. Speaking with reporters in St. James last evening, Mr. Bunting said he's not hopeful that there will be any great results under this SOE. The Central Manchester MP and former Security Minister says the members of the force are being used we ineffectively. Need intelligence so that they can identify who the violence producers are, where the guns are, and go for them in a pincer-like movement. This, you know, state of emergency approach has been just used for largely for public relations. The, the data says that it has not been effective, and we need something more meaningful from the government to respond to the crime situation. On the international front, Deutsche Bank laid off staff from Sydney to New York today as it began to slash 18,000 jobs as part of an 8.3 billion reinvention thrust. 18,000 jobs are being cut at Deutsche Bank as the struggling German lender announced a dramatic restructuring that's expected to cost over 8 billion US dollars. Around one in five employees will be let go by 2022. On Monday, whole teams in its Asian operations were already eliminated, but Europe and the US are expected to be hit hardest. It's one of the biggest overhauls to an investment bank in the post-financial crisis era. It's scrapping its global equities business, cutting some of its fixed income operations, and scaling back its investment bank, which generates around half of Deutsche's revenue. It will set up a separate so-called bad bank of the assets it doesn't want going forward, worth $83 billion. The head of its investment bank already agreed to step down on Friday, with the head of regulation and head of sales also being let go. It's a major retreat for a bank which for years had tried to compete as a major force on Wall Street. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website www.barbilistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.